What's up YouTube, my name is David. And today I'm going to show you a superpower that all humans have. I'm going to show you how to vibrate any structure, object, or any reverberant room with just your voice and science. I know somebody in the comments is going to put a timestamp, like they always do, to where I am singing in a hallway and vibrating the walls of that room. However, you're going to miss so much great content in this video because I'm going to show you how to apply this technique to other things as well, not just the walls in a room. So let's get nerdy. In order to become a master of vibrating things with just your voice, you need to understand this very important term first, resonant frequency. Resonant frequency is a term that is used to describe the frequency or pitch that an object, volume, or space likes to resonate at. This might sound new to some of you, but I'm sure most of you have experienced this before. Have you ever been in a room singing or listening to music with loudspeakers or something like that, and you notice certain pitches vibrate louder than others? Some of them are actually so loud that they can vibrate your skull and your body. Whatever pitch that is, is more than likely the resonant frequency of the room. Pretty much any object or space that can vibrate or reverberate has a resonant frequency. There are a few different ways to find the resonant frequency of an object or a space, so I'm going to start with something on the smaller scale to give you a good example of how to find that resonant frequency and what happens when you produce the resonant frequency aimed at that specific object. So let's start off with something small like this. Not sponsored by Gold Peak, but this stuff is great. So this is a bottle of tea liquid and the space in the bottle that we are concerned with is the area above where the liquid is. So the area that is occupied by air in the bottle. Just like on those videos where people are using wine glasses as instruments that are pitched, the level of fluid in the bottle determines the pitch of the bottle and you can change the pitch by changing the level of fluid. So now you're wondering, how do we find the resonant frequency of this awkward shaped bottle that has an undetermined amount of liquid in it? Well, it's pretty easy actually. All you have to do is flick the bottle. Bum, 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 mm. Something like that. So now that we have the resonant frequency of the bottle, what do we do with it? Well, in order to understand the importance of the resonant frequency, I'm going to slide through a range of pitches. And when I get to the resonant frequency, you'll be able to tell. And what happens is pretty amazing. Mm. So if you can't tell what's going on, when you sing the resonant frequency of this bottle into the bottle, the bottle vibrates drastically more than it would if you sing any other pitch into the bottle. And actually it is vibrating so much in my hand that it is shaking and buzzing this plastic ring on the top. So I know many of you are wondering, why does the volume increase so much to a point where it actually buzzes the plastic clip on the bottle when you only sing the resonant frequency? Think of the relationship between your voice and the bottle vibrating like this. You just met somebody new, you're trying to strike up conversation with them and keep them interested. In this case, you are the voice that is phonating and the person you're trying to keep interested is the bottle that you're trying to vibrate. Now, if you talk about dogs or cats or mowing the lawn or what kind of t-shirts you like, that person isn't very interested. However, the moment you mention avocados, you have all of their attention and now they are talking about avocados in return with you. They are reciprocating some of what you are putting out. The bottle is only going to reciprocate back if you hit the right note. When you sing the resonant frequency of this bottle into the bottle, the wavelengths or sound energy is no longer just being diffused into the liquid of the bottle and back into the air and surroundings. It is vibrating the walls of this bottle because that is the frequency that they vibrate at, their resonant frequency. So instead of just hearing my voice create that pitch, the vibrations from my voice are vibrating the bottle as well. So now you have two sources that are creating the same pitch. This gives a doubling effect and you get all sorts of harmonics and things going on. This is why you get a sound that is nearly twice as loud so it can vibrate things and just be louder in general. Now before moving out to the hallway, I would like to give you an example on something bigger that a lot of you probably have at home as well that you can try out. This is a guitar, if you didn't know. So what I'm going to do is sing the same pitch that the D string is sounding towards the D string and listen to what the guitar is doing. And what you're going to hear is the D string sounding and resonating in the body of the guitar even though it hasn't been plucked. Oh. 
Now this works because, well, the resonant frequency of the string that's tuned to a D is a D. That's the pitch that it likes to vibrate at, and that is the pitch that it will vibrate at if that frequency or pitch is sounded at it. Pretty amazing. It's almost like the universe wanted to get poetic with us. There doesn't need to be any physical contact to vibrate something or set it in motion. All it needs is to hear the right things. In this case, the right frequency. I admit I am missing out a term here, and that term is acoustic resonance. Acoustic resonance is the phenomenon that describes what happens when you sing the resonant frequency in a hallway or create that frequency in a system. Acoustic resonance more often comes to play when you're, when you're dealing with spaces or larger objects or mechanical systems. For example, that guitar that I just sang a D into to vibrate the D string shows acoustic resonance when the strings are plucked because the body of the guitar is built to resonate those sounds. Likewise, certain performance in music halls like the Tokyo City Opera Hall are built in a way to reflect the sound in certain directions. So even if you're sitting in the upper balcony, you perceive the sounds at almost a flat equalization with bass pitches and super high frequencies carrying just as well as the mid-range pitches. And that brings us to what this video is titled about. Let's go out in the hallway, figure out the resonant frequency of the room that I'm about to sing in, and then vibrate the walls in that room. Because that's what you came here for. There is a neat little formula that we are going to use to find our resonant frequency of this room, more specifically the resonant frequency between these two walls. This formula is actually for finding the frequency of something if you know its wavelength. This formula reads like this. Frequency equals the speed of sound divided by lambda. Lambda in this case is going to be the ideal wavelength measurement for this hallway specifically. Think of it like this. Do you remember jumping on the trampoline as a kid, or maybe you still do, and somebody gives you what's called a double jump or a double bounce. That is when you jump up in the air and somebody else pushes their legs into the trampoline at the perfect moment when you're coming down and it gives you this extra boost into the air. But if they get it wrong and your timing is off, it doesn't really give you much boost at all and it can actually diffuse your jump and make you jump lower than you normally would. Well, there is something similar going on with the vibrations when you are singing the resonant frequency versus a non-resonant frequency. What we need to do is measure the distance between these two walls like this. I built this hallway almost exactly four feet wide, so we are going to use four feet as our measurement. Now, because we want to figure out the distance it takes for the sound waves to go from our mouth to the wall and back, we are going to double this distance. So the distance the wavelength has to travel to reverberate back to the source is eight feet. So the average speed of sound that we're going to use is 1130 feet per second. Divide that by eight feet and you get 140. 41.25 units per second. In this case, we are talking about cycles per second. If you know anything about wavelengths or frequencies, you know that cycles per second translates to hertz. So our resonant frequency of this space is 141.25 hertz. Now, if we just use this fancy calculator online real quick, we can find that 141.25 hertz is roughly a C sharp sharp three. Knowing this frequency should get us really close to the actual resonant frequency of this hallway where we're going to see some results. This is theoretical, mathematical, based off of our measurements and the assumption that the speed of sound in this room is 1130 feet per second, which, you know, it's probably not exactly that, but it's going to get us pretty close. So now I'm going to stand in this hallway, sing directly at one of the walls in the center of the hallway through a range of pitches or frequencies and see if the resonant frequency of this room kind of shows itself and is apparent. Just by finding the resonant frequency of a room through a few simple calculations and singing that pitch with a decent bit of intonation and some experimenting, you can make the walls of your room vibrate or shake. Now, I can only produce so much volume and so much energy in the sound waves by myself. However, I would really love to try this experiment with other people. If I can just lightly vibrate a wall by myself by singing the resonant frequency at it, imagine what 10 people could do in the same situation. I would really love to make this happen someday, so. So keep an eye out in the months to come and see if I'm able to pull something 
something like this off with my friends. In the meantime, I would love to hear what other video ideas you all have for me. You've been really supportive and helpful in the past on giving me ideas on things I should make videos on, and, and I really appreciate that. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. I love making these because I know a lot of people are stuck at home right now with not a lot to do, and the more of us that are helping contribute to entertainment, I think the easier it is for those stuck at home to just live their lives and not go completely insane. So if you like this video, don't forget to comment and like it because it helps other people find it as well. Also, don't forget to follow me on Instagram and subscribe and hit that bell thing on here on YouTube. Yeah. And lastly, I hope this video inspires you to do something creative with music, whether it's shaking walls with your voice or finding new ways that you can help people with your music. Just get out there and be creative. Until next time.